coming to the Saturday morning wake-up call right here on KFAR. It's local talk radio. This is our one of Patriots Lament. I am Steve Floyd, the man with the face made for radio, and basically the monkey behind the machine today, as I am every Saturday. Joining us in the studio, as always, from Far North Tactical, we have Aaron Bennett. Good morning, Aaron. Um, good morning, Steve. And from Bighorn Enterprises, we have Josh Bennett. Good morning, Josh. Good morning. All right. We have a, another person lurking about. Do you want to mention him or just let him be a silent partner? The punk over there? It's one of the... Uh, the silent partner, dude. One of the spawn, spawn. Of, the, of Bennett in the air today. Israel. Israel good. came in. Morning, Israel. How are you doing? We're going to let him take the I'm calls so today. I'm so tired. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thanks. Fun of me. It's, okay. Excuse me. It's after 9 in the morning. Why? I okay. I'm not even going to go down this road. I think he's making fun of his uncle. I haven't slept for days. <laughs> <laughs> brave no sleep. Go for days without sleep. It's, it's been a, a braver warrior. Slept. Ah, I knew you'd get it in some point. Somehow it has to be mentioned. All right, gentlemen, take it away. Uh, let's take that call for one. Please. 458 Talk is the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Hello, this is Cricket. Um, um, I want to talk about the jurisdiction today. Go ahead. And, um, well, anyway, I wanted to get some information out there on the uh, jurisdiction. And I'll start out by saying that um, in the United States, there are two separate and distinct jurisdictions. We have the United States and we have the state jurisdiction. And um, the jurisdiction of the United States, covers the territory over land mass, high seas, or water that are not within the boundaries of the state. This would include the District of Columbia, America, Samoa, Guam, the Northern Islands, Puerto Rico, and Virginia Islands, and federal enclaves within the state. Also, the uh, dockyards, forts, and military bases of the United States. And uh, uh, there is nothing in the language of Article 1, Section 8, Clause 3 to even indicate that Congress has the authority to regulate anything after the item has moved in interstate commerce. For instance, I'll read Article 1, Section 8. That clears this, pro- this point. It'll point it out what I'm talking about. I'm a little nervous. I'm not used to Go ahead. Thing, but I'll continue. Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17. Exclusive legislation in all cases whatsoever over such districts not exceeding 10 miles square as may become the seat of government of the United States, the District of Columbia, and to exercise authority over all places purchased by the consent of the state. And the framers further secured the rights of the people with the Ninth and the Tenth Amendments in the Bill of Rights. In the Ninth Amendment, the enumerate, enumeration in the Constitution of certain rights shall not be construed to deny or disparage others retained by the people. What this means is the Ninth Amendment emphasizes that the federal government has limited powers and that all individual right, all individual rights are not delegated to the government, nor are rights denied or despaired because they are not explicitly mentioned. Now, I really like the uh, Tenth Amendment. They made it really clear the power is not delegated to the United States by the Constitution, nor prohibited by it to the states, are reserved to the states respectfully or to the people. So the, the, uh, this amendment prohibits all federal gun laws, abortion laws, drug laws, tax laws. And, right. uh, yeah, we've talked about that a lot, actually. Oh. Well, that's really good because what's been going on. we got so many people right now that are, you know, sitting in prison with I- IRS violations and political and victimless crimes. Oh, yeah, and drug laws and all that good stuff. Well, what we've got is uh, we got the United federal States and the laws. states. All federal laws are in the United States rep- uh, apply to the United States. State law applies to state state law. 
But um, what we have is uh, a jurisdiction, and it's made it's really clear with uh, with you know all our ninth and tenth amendments, and uh, you know if a person goes and you know to court and they're being charged with a federal crime, but yet they're in the state jurisdiction, then the uh, federal government has no uh, business even trying that case. So right, the crime the, was committed in the state, not the jurisdiction of the United States. Right, but the federal government's pretty much decided that it has jurisdiction over the whole of the United States. Right, it did, but it doesn't. Right, but it doesn't matter. They have the power to do such uh, well, I mean, Cricket, I mean, they, they how, have how would you, how would force. you, exactly, how would you um, stand up against it? There was a guy down in Anchorage who didn't want to get pulled over on Tuesday, and he's dead now. I mean, because they well, had the state, sh- state of Alaska shot him. Well, the feds. sure, but I mean, the the fed. What happened in Ruby Ridge? That was the feds, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that was. Federal. What happened? What happened in Waco? That was feds, right? Yeah, it was. Uh, it yeah. was against the law. See, and and I mean, it may have been against the law. the law, but there was nothing they could have stopped it. Is there? Well, if you had a decent attorney, or if you go in, if you had a decent attorney, that could have been stopped, or the or the uh, sheriff in that county should have put a stop to that. And see, now now you're getting somewhere. The sheriff in the county. Yes. Right. Going to court though is a waste of time. I mean, you're asking the state to limit the state, and we've seen from time ad nauseum that the state does not restrict itself. I mean, that's against the state's own best interest. Federal uh, judges get paid by the federal government, and when they expand the powers of the federal government, they expand their own powers themselves. Otherwise, I mean, look at the with Franklin and all the Commerce Clause, the way he destroyed the original intent with that, and the Supreme yeah. Court and all the courts went right along with it. So, yeah. I mean, I agree to the extent that uh, obviously the federal government has no business doing 99.99999% of the stuff they're doing. The problem is, is that they have the force and power to do so. And the states, the states themselves, I, don't want to, I guess I don't want to confuse state, state, and state, but the state governments themselves are willful and complicit in the whole thing because they get federal money. What do you think? Yeah. The states aren't going to say, no, we're not going to let you do this because the feds, I mean, Alaska, I think, is probably the best case in point in this whole United States is that any time that they say, well, they even breathe um, Tenth Amendment or uh, nullification, the federal government just goes, hey, well, we just won't give you any federal dollars. And then they go, <laughs> yeah, just kidding, just Never kidding. Mind. <laughs> and our state attorney general, he's totally against nullification. The legislative uh, lawyers are totally against it. They say it's quote unquote unconstitutional. But I mean, I understand jurisdictions very well actually yeah. unfortunately too well to the point where i went to jail quite a few times arguing the case of that but the problem is we live in a tyrannical state that does not care yeah they what don't. is right they don't. or wrong i have to agree with that what people have to do is learn what their rights are and uh, realize you know how bad it is right now and uh, they need to succeed and, and get out of it because, you know, they, they claim, you know, well, the, the supreme law of the land is, you know, Article 2, Section, or Article 6, Section 2, that that isn't the supreme law of the land. It's no. whatever the Congress or whatever these people want to do to us. Right, and we And we're going to about... end up going into full-fledged war here. Uh, we're in the already... War 48, anyway, eventually. There already is a full-fledged war going on. Oh, it's yeah. Just... Yeah, we're, I th- I believe we're under martial law right now. I really do. No, well, actually, it's been huh? codified in 1933 that we're we've been in martial law since 1933. But the sure. problem is that True. it doesn't it doesn't matter. Martial law, no martial law, it doesn't make any difference on the the outcome. I mean, the uh, you see the arguments like the people in the sovereignty movement, the sovereign citizen movement, or whatever, which. There's actually an oxymoron in the beginning. I mean, just the fact they call themselves that. A sovereign is free. A citizen's a slave. So you can't have the two together and say, I am one and the other. But no. the uh, I, I'm a master slave, Josh. <laughs> but they try to use um, 
case law and jurisdiction and stuff like that to fight the very entity that created it. And the problem with our federal case law and using that against them is that they claim now that they have the right to pass any law and do anything they wish, which is a problem of the Constitution in the very beginning because the Founding Fathers, one of the flaws that we believe that they made was to give Congress the right, quote-unquote, to create law, which is garbage. That doesn't yeah, have anything yeah. to do with common law. Common law was precedent from time and past history and culture and all that kind of stuff, where when the Founding Fathers said, well, Congress shall blah, 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 it totally they totally went against their own common law values that they fought it for during the revolution. To their, um, to yeah. their, well, what we to, got today, you know, instead of having judicial engagement, we have judicial uh, abdication today. And right. that's really dangerous to all of us. And um, right, the, really, the real danger in the courtroom is the skipping over of what the founders put in place to keep it from coming becoming this. And that's the... Jury. duty of the jury to nullify law and where you could go back and cite case law instead of citing um, federal decisions we should be able to go back and cite the citizens decisions on ruling on laws and calling them unjust but nobody exercises that right so the one thing that our founders kept in, or put in place to keep us from becoming under or coming under a tyrannical government all of us shirk, shy away from, mm-hmm. and pretend like it's... I mean, guys like Frank Turney are made fun of. I mean, we ask for... We get what we ask for. I right, mean, the jury would totally... If the jurors would do their duty, that... Regardless of what they're instructed. Regardless of what they're instructed to do, and I've argued with some people about that, say, well, once you take the oath... You know, to follow the judge's orders, blah, 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 you're bound by that oath. Some people? But, Joe Miller. So, Tuh. my, well, there's other people, too. Didn't want to just point out one certain person. But yeah, I but he's the, he's the favorite. But my opinion is that the judge does not have the right, does not have the authority to require you to take an oath to follow his authority in the first place. That's tyranny right off the bat. The founding fathers would not go along with that. I mean, if we took that to the logical end and say, well, once you take that oath and you're bound, well, then the founding fathers had no right to revolution then. Something that Cricket said earlier in, in her um, presentation here about people learning their rights. How do you... I'm, this is something that I'm, I'm kind of beginning to process here because something that I've heard the two of you say, Aaron and, and Josh, is that rights aren't something that we need to be told what we have. You know. Right. I mean, and, and, and it's something that you have because God gave it to you. You have the right to life. Somebody doesn't have to come and tell you that, no, no, Josh, you have the right to life. They, they can't just come and kill you. People know instinctively, hey, I don't need to be dead. <laughs> you know, and it's the same thing. You have the right to, to not be thrown in a cage. The, these fundamental human rights that they come from oh, God. Americans sure. don't believe that they have a right to any of those things. They, it's just uh, the gun control issue is my favorite one. Yeah. Americans don't believe they have a right to own guns. If they did, they wouldn't fear gun control. They wouldn't talk, uh, roll off the cliche phases, uh, phrases saying things like, "When they come to get my guns, blah blah blah." What? Am, why would sand. any American be- even ever say when they come to get my guns? Why would that even come across his mouth? Because he doesn't believe that it's his God-given right to own them. It'd be like saying when they come to get my children, or when sure, they come he, to take away yeah, my wife. I, I don't know if it. I don't know if he necessarily believes that he doesn't have the right, but he definitely believes that he's not free to own them. And, it, and it's why people you, keep going back and trying to, to find them, some kind of a legal, them. a legal loophole where they can say, "Look, look, you, you, you're you're breaking the law. You can't do this." Right. As if somehow they're going to, a piece of paper, like, and people keep saying, well, the Second Amendment, this pre- this prevents them from doing, no, it doesn't. Or it's, even worse than that, no, they I say the Second Amendment the, gives me the right. I think it's the opposite right. of what you say, because you have to take the, it, we would go the route of Australia if they made guns totally illegal. The Australians, they buried them, mm-hmm. so they could still keep that right they still, or not keep that right, they kept that freedom to own them. They buried them, and they still have their line in the sand. 
if it ever comes to that point. If they ever come dig them up, by golly. <laughs> <laughs> then, if they ever then come dig fight. up our guns, they can pry them from... From my poor dead fingers. Well, back to... Uh, <clears throat> so what, uh, <clears throat> what are you advocating for, Cricket, as far as uh, solutions... Disillusions, whatever, as far as, uh, I mean, I know you said that we need to know what our rights are. That's that's a good point. We need to know, actually, people need to know and stand up for their liberty. Someday they need to do it. But we don't, Not surely violent. don't advocate a uh, violent revolution because we're of the opinion that it would simply be a French revolution, mm-hmm. which was just blood, uh, blood in the street. M- mob rule, basically. And we definitely don't. It's just ridiculous. It would, it would, end. well, unless it would, it's you know brought on. I mean, you start seeing uh, Chinese troops, you know, and Russian troops down in your on your streets, ordering you around. Eventually, that comes about because of that situation. Well, obviously, if we I see Chinese see troops, I would see a revolutionary war. But when it just keeps, you know, this government is making allegiance with communist countries. The allegiance, that's illegal and it's high treason to make allegiance with a foreign country. And Obama has already done that. When he wants something done, he runs to the United Nations. You're not supposed to be making contracts well, all of them, and allegiance with all of foreign countries. Since, all of them has since Wilson. Well, even, I mean, look at our, Every our, our involvement has. in the United Nations, our involvement in the League of Nations, our involvement in NATO. Aren't all of those treason? Yeah. All of them are treason. Our Every one of them. in the Iraq That's war. That's why people have got to start understanding that, uh, you know, this, the government isn't working anymore. That's the bottom line. The government doesn't work. Government does not work. Ever. Government is an institution of monopoly of force to enslave its people. To get it tax for the throne and to grow. That's definitely. You know, and these all people, there. they keep, you know, Republicans go, oh, we're going to vote. No, they're going to vote another president. Why? Why would you do that? You're not going to get. I don't believe there'll ever be another president. That's why they want to flood this country with Mexicans in here. That's one of the reasons they want to flood the country. Once, all these people are going to always vote Democrat. And what Republicans are in there will eventually be voted out, or eventually they'll die. Uh, but it, it's not going to change. It's going to continually getting worse and worse. Right. We don't advocate for any political party. What? What? I don't, Every understand. Political I don't, party is. I don't understand what voting in Republicans would benefit anything. I mean, look at the great, the great difference between Murkowski and, and McCain and their voting records. Oh, wait. Oh, no, McCain's, there is <laughs> McCain, <laughs> McCain is the author of the National Defense Authorization What Act. has he done? He uh, voted. He uh, authored uh, indefinite detention for American citizens. He's, yeah, he's done exactly. That. That's pretty sweet. That they do that, but as far as doing anything for people, they don't do anything. And he's a flip flopper. All of them are flip floppers. They're either, you know, whatever side, you know, sides getting voted in. That's the side they want to be isn't, on. Isn't that why All they run for office in the first place? Who do you know that runs for office based on principle? Any of them? No. It's all based on power, isn't it? It's power. And isn't that what government is all about? What they are, megalomania. All government is this power. Anyone going for government is power. We, this is why we advocate the ending of the state. There shouldn't be a state. That's the only freedom we're ever going to have is to end the state. There should not be government. There should just be simple governance of ourselves. But, anyways, we're gonna. Move on with some other callers. We appreciate your call and your time here today. Thank you. 458 Talk is the number. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Who's this? Morning, Steve. How you doing? Good. Who is this? It's Bull. Bull, what's on your mind? Uh, well, I have a pretty good lead into what I had to say. Um, for, the, for the first thing you mentioned about, you know, what happened at Waco, what happened at Ruby Ridge, uh, Rough estimate how many agents you reckon they had at Waco. Somewhere in the neighborhood of 260 from what I understand. Is that correct? Yeah, somewhere around there. Just under 300. Uh, all right. Uh, Mr. Bennett, Mr. Bennett, you ever been in the military? Nope. Mr. Floyd, I know you have. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, now, when you're in the military, is it uh, an article? Everybody just take care of themselves and do what they want to do? <laughs> no, you need permission to wipe your own uh, buttocks, my friend. Well, I understand that, but let's go out in the field. Combat position. Okay. Do, do you 
what we want to do, or do we have a pecking order? You not only have a pecking order, you have a rules of engagement before you even start. Correct. And why is that? Well, I, I'm not sure I ever really explored why. I, I just did what co- I was told. <laughs> co- cohesion no, I, uh, you, you cohesion been, of the unit. You ever you ever been in the thick? You ever actually been front line battle? No, most of my stuff was behind the lines. I was uh, I was doing intelligence collection and uh, getting people well, killed if, by if, by proxy. If any military ever wishes to win anything, you have to have a pecking order. Commands have to be followed, and things have to be set up. Now, you said, what could people have done in Waco? What could they have done at Ruby Ridge? If the general population would have had a set, and let's say a couple of thousand people would have come together and went there and said, whoa, this is going to stop. But everybody is too cushy in their life. They're too busy driving their trucks and making their money or you know, going to their job every day and making their money. They're happy taking their wife across town. If our founding fathers had felt that way, this country would have never been free. Uh, and until people I, I don't, I don't think do, it's because people are so are cushy. I think it's because people, you know, even though they take up issue with this or that, the legitimacy, the legitimacy of the state is still ingrained in them. It's really hard to get anybody to say that the state as a whole is bad, just certain aspects of it. I mean, even the last caller um, digressed... Uh, to say that Obama was the problem, or that uh, Democrats, uh, overwhelming amount of Democrats, is the majority of the problem. Not to say that the state as a whole is the issue. Now, it's really hard to get people to go. I mean, obviously, you could take issue with something like Waco really easy, but that the issue wasn't them going to Waco. The issue is the use of force and the justification of it, which they get from us. Yeah, unfortunately, well, that people didn't stand up and say something. It could have. You're absolutely right as far as ending it. It could have ended without one drop of blood. Of enough well, people let, just went down there and said, "You're not going to do this." Let me give you a quick analogy that an old uncle of mine, God rest him, is dead now, but he used to give. He lived in the backwoods of North Carolina, and it was under a different issue, but it, it applies here. I'm going to ask you a question. It's a simple, simple question. It takes a simple answer. You're living bottom of the mountain. The only thing you're living on is your chickens and goats, blah, blah, blah. You got a pack of dogs coming down off the mountain, say 10 of them. Now, you've seen them once or twice, shot, you know, shot, shot, scared them off. You know you only got about six or seven of these dogs that are killing your chickens, your goats. But when you see them coming down the mountain, now let me ask you, are you going to simply start off in dogs, or are you going to wait till they get in the chicken yard and only kill the ones that are killing the chickens? What are you going to do? This is your survival. No, you'd have to kill all the dogs. Well, there you go. You know what the problem is, and until somebody decides to do something other than a bunch of rhetoric and put something together that actually creates something that makes a change, we're all going to sit back, slap our gums, and they're going to push it to the point where there's no coming back. They got you by the short hairs, and you're done. You Rather, always have a good the, day. The only change... The only change is in the hearts and minds of people. You yeah, know, you're, you could go kill everyone in government tomorrow, and the next day we would have the same government. You can kill everyone in government tomorrow, and the same people doing it would set up a new leader and have an exact same thing. That's what Schaefer Cox was all about. We it wasn't about overthrowing government; it was about overthrowing government and replacing it with him. People call in here all the time and say, "We've got to stop this government, blah blah blah." And we say, "What's your solution?" And their solution is, "Well, we have to get a good leader in there. We'd have to start over with a new government." a new con you know the old constitution or what blah 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 and i totally disagree with flapping our gums that is exactly what we should be doing and if you actually do believe in what the founding fathers said that's exactly what they said it takes a intellectual thought and process to understand liberty because you win the war in the hearts and the minds before the first shots ever fought fired if you don't your battle's worthless because what are you fighting for you mentioned we it. have to understand it before there's bloodshed. There doesn't need to be bloodshed. That's the whole thing. If we understood it from flapping our gums, we would understand Etienne de la Boitie, Boitie and understand that the only reason they have this authority anyways is because we give it to them. 
you mentioned we have earlier. To take that, that away. Right, then it's if over. We would, if, we, if we would draw consent. We're the arms. We're the legs. We're the voice for the state to do and get away with what they want to get away with. John Adams said the war has to be won in the mind. How can you argue with that? All of our lines are on hold. 458 Talk is number. We'll come back with more Patriots Lament after this. Right, welcome back to the Saturday morning wake-up call. It's hour one of not Patriots not Lament right here on KFAR, local talk radio, and, of course, the real brains behind the show, the Bennett Brothers. We've got Josh Bennett from Bighorn Enterprises, and we've got Aaron Bennett from Foreign Affairs. Good morning, gentlemen. I'm not going to listen to Josh anymore until he gets his gun and shoots people in the face. That's that's what I decided. That's the solution. Well, I, I mean, if you think about it, though, violence always solves any argument, doesn't it? Well, if you want to be the winner. For one side. <laughs> yeah. Dead men, dead men don't argue. Dead men can't be wrong. Well, dead men can't take you to court and sue you. That's true. That's usually the law enforcement's view on it. Oh. Dead men, dead men tell no tales, whatever it is. Let's, uh, I guess we'll just bang on the callers. Four or five. Bang them out. Talk is the number. Good morning, caller. This is Patriots Lament. Who's this? Hold. This oh, one's holding. I, I hear a bro- uh, somebody there. Good morning. Who's this? Hello? They fell asleep. Hello, that's you. Is this me? No, it's, it's yes, it's you. Go ahead. Who is this? What's your name? Uh, uh, Gerald? Joe, you're on the air. Uh, yeah, Josh, I just wanted to ask if you would please return my property. Yep, I will do it today. Okay, how and where? Well, I'll give you a call after the show because I have your number on that thing. Okay, yeah. so I'll, I'll leave my cell phone on for a couple hours. Okay. Because I usually turn it off because I don't have any uh, electricity. Call you right about 1130? Uh, yeah, because, all right, thank you very much. Yep. Right. Four five eight talk is a number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Good morning. Oh, Cecily, how are you? Uh, I'm doing all right. What's on your mind today? Oh, it was. It was just sad to see that the police officers have become bored with mere terrorism and kidnapping and rape. The new appetite is chase and murder. But then I also have a question about you know all the the dying and the death and the murder and stuff. Each time is like. Is that a tragedy or a blessing each time is putting um, the word love or death or or uh, joy or sorrow each time behind the intention of it? That's the thing is maybe those officers got out of hand in their intention. And I don't know, it's, I, I, I can't imagine that people would do wrong you know, except for having a buildup of of um, regret and stuff, but for a whole bunch of officers in a, to get that wound up to to murder that boy. You're talking about in Anchorage. Yeah, but you know, the thing is, is it, it's it's always as even in the '60s, I watched people get together like rabid dogs kind of thing and how um you know it just is is it some kind of sickness or you know what's going on <laughs> you know where where groups of people get mad like that and and you know it's like that painted bird story i keep bringing up is um if you pay attention and not engage in that yourself then you wouldn't be caught up into that emotion of of, of of attacking and killing, you know, a human being or one of your own kind, kind of like, you know, how they, I don't know. I just, it's just getting it to, to be um, frightening to even consider going out the door that you might be, you know, at any moment um, if your just headlight is out or something that, that uh, you could be killed just by, because your headlight is out, some kind of. Anyway, it's frightening, and uh, maybe the officers would consider, you know, um, getting some public relations and understanding so that there's a reconnect with the people uh, for the job that they're being paid for. I don't know. That do not work too good. <laughs> Reconnecting with the people? Yeah. I mean, the point is to force a mission, and that's... Isn't that the point? Well, we had a caller the other day that mentioned how they, he felt that it was the police's job to go out and punish 
the wrongdoer. <laughs> and I mean, I mean, obviously, if you're going to in- employ Judge Dredd, you can go out there and <clears throat> you're breaking the law. Yeah, blam, the biggest blam, problem blam. I have with that is that they're the ones that get to decide what's right and wrong. The people that employ them, I don't employ them by. I employ them by force. I'm forced to employ, to pay. But the problem with it is that the people that are, like you just said, they're supposed to go out there and punish the wrongdoers. Well, who decides what's right and wrong? When you have an assembly or a legislature that decides today this is right, tomorrow this is right, but then the next day this is wrong, the next day this is wrong. I mean, how do you... It's just bull. Well, we, a lot of people agree on the Constitution, but then other the people that do are, you know, uh, uh, say to uphold it, everyone who takes an oath is treasonous. And, and uh, I mean, they just don't even, they ignore their promises. It's like it's like getting married and then going out and fooling around with all well, of the... The thing is that uh, it's like the FBI said on Michael Duke's show a few months back was they said, well, if the legislature passes a law, it is constitutional. And when they were asked about that, they said, well, obviously they wouldn't pass... How could they pass a law if it wasn't constitutional? If they pass a law, it's obviously constitutional because they did it, which is the same thing that the parliament said about the colonists, the colonists argued that what you're doing violates the British Constitution and the rights of man. And they said, well, no, it doesn't, because we passed the law and said it didn't. <laughs> so, I mean, it's it's a monopoly on law. It's a monopoly on force, and there's no there's no arguing with it. it and if you there's no arguing with it if you think that when you argue their terms with them, you're not going to win. Because they just have circular reasoning, and they always come out on top. That's the organized crime is what that all is. It has nothing to do with justice or, or, you know. I prefer organized crime, actually, because when you have mafias, they usually come in there and they tell you, hey, you're going to pay me this much money for my protection, not to... And then you do, and then that's the contract, then and it's they leave you alone. Yeah. <laughs> These guys say you're going to pay us for your, or we're going to, you're going to pay us for your protection, and we're going to bug you and pass more laws to hopefully get to throw you in jail to get that protection, and we decide what protection you get, how much is going to cost, and we yeah. keep change, we keep changing the term. Cecily, do you have you ever gone out hunting or camping here? Oh, yes. Now, if you encounter a bear out there, do you run away from it? No, you don't. Okay. But <laughs> d- d- does that stop you from going out there where you know the bears are? No. No. I mean, don't be afraid to go out just because there are some predatory police. Yeah, well, just I really don't try- run away or they will kill you. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. Well, that's you shouldn't true. be doing what you were doing. It mu- obviously was his own fault. I mean, what, the guy that got killed down there on Tuesday, he obviously... Oh, that he, happens he all over visited. the country. Yeah, my my My, my uh, uh, cousin called and told me that it was last year that that there was this boy and that's what his game was he was he liked the adrenaline of running from the cops and they'd known him they known him since he started when he was just a kid and they finally you know after uh five or six years before of this chasing this boy um they finally killed him but but the thing is they knew that's what he did i mean he it was like a cat and mouse game and i guess they got tired of it yeah we don't I don't follow Anchorage news a whole lot, but it just seems quite disturbing. It seems to be a trend. More and more. Didn't they kill like six or seven people last year? I think it was or seven. Eight, yeah. Seven. Yeah. Which was yeah. a record. They've only killed one so far this year. But hey, it's only February. They got time. So would you go into a place where the bullets are always flying? <laughs> I'm not. I'm not scared of bullets. I, I'm. I'm more scared of the people who are sending the bullets at me because, uh, I mean, you, th- you think about this, though. I mean, they shot at him seven times and only hit him three. <laughs> you should go, well, I guess we could duck. <laughs> and he was he was stopped in the car No, the, with his hands up. So, I mean, it, I, if they're having a hard time hitting that target. You have to understand what the danger is. They claim the right to kill you because they claim the right that they own you. So... You have to keep yourself out of, unfortunately, situations that get yourself shot. 
And I've got to stop feeling about it. I even see a police officer on the road, and I'm not guilty of anything at all. <laughs> you know, but if I see him, I get the shakes. <laughs> it's just like uh, it, 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 it's it, 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 even involved in in them at all is like rape. It just you have no you have there's nothing you can do but submit to whatever it is. You have to kiss the hand that's going to kick you in the teeth. It's just it's just a uh, the most, uh, it, it, um, I don't know, it just, it, it breaks every thing inside of you that, that, that would consider, um, 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 even, uh, any kind of, uh, em- empathy for the person who is doing these, who's doing that. It's just, I don't, I don't know how the, how, Someone can be sadistic like that on a regular basis, except for the the money that no, it's supersedes they have personal. A, they have the support of the people. That's why they have the support of the people overall, in general. And in general, when someone gets shot by a policeman, the first thing people think is, "Well, he must have been doing something." Yeah, when that's the breaks. Yeah. When Waco happened. The uh, media portrayed them to be psychotics and child rapers and all this and that. And which they could have picked him up in town when they he could have picked him up in town the day before. Yeah, he <laughs> talked with the sheriff. I think it was even the day before, and they could have picked him up. That wasn't the intent. They wanted to kill all of them. And the whole thing, the reason they do that, there's a reason. They want to desensitize the people. They want to push the boundaries and see where they can go with it. They want to see what the reaction is going to be. That was right after just a couple of years after Ruby Ridge and they saw what happened there, nothing. Well, I mean, that one caller was absolutely right when he said somebody, the people got to stand up when that happens and hopefully next time it happens, people will. I had the ar- uh, army attack me in New Mexico, um, well, uh, uh, our whole neighborhood up there because they thought our septic tanks were methamphetamine labs. They came up and they, and they had the whole army, the neighbor called up and he said, he said, uh, uh, the, I think you're being invaded. And so there was, all, there was like the whole all painted face army guys came up and, and opened up all the, the, the feed bins so that the sheep would eat till they popped. And, and they laid us down in the, in the dirt. They were like, um, our neighbors like were uh, 65 and 70. They had them laying down in the dirt. They, they, put, they had dogs run all through my, my home. They pulled everything down from the shelves to the ground they trashed everything and uh and then but the uh, people want that to happen cecily they 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 encourage the war on drugs so those things happen but i had the mayor i had the mayor's daughter right up at my house we were planning i had a little ballet school and we were planning a show and had a tea and everybody was up there and, and 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 you know everybody knew me well, somebody you know, didn't. Somebody thought you had a meth lab, so they're going to have to take care of business. And every, there's no. And the lady, I mean, the biggest problem with the biggest problem with that the whole situation is when they do make a mistake, there's no recourse. You have absolutely no recourse. There's no nothing. If you're lucky, somebody might get in the paper, one of the chief or their spokesman. Yeah, it was a very unfortunate incident. We yeah. didn't get it right this time, but by golly, we'll keep trying. We might screw up every once in a while. Sorry for dead people. Sorry we smashed your face in the ground, blah, blah, blah. But we got a job to do, and we're going to do it. And the people require that. The people want that. So until people change their minds and decide they're not going to go along with that anymore, it's going to keep happening. But thanks for the call. 458 Talk is the number. Good morning. This is the Saturday Morning Wake Up Call. Hour 1 of Patriots Lament. Who's this? Now, this is Frank, and I wanted to talk to you in conjunction with some of the things I talk, discussed with you last week about homosexual marriage, and you turned on the concept that uh, why is the government involved in marriage at all? Yes. And uh, when you look at that from a realistic approach to the reality of, of taking care of the children, of disease, of relationships that, that in a modern world, you can't have it that way. And looking at marriage from, uh, as we have it historically, this is from just the world book, it's a relationship between a man and a woman, giving them a legal agreement to live together. Marriage is also an important religious ceremony in many parts of the world. I'm paraphrasing. And it's to, for protection for the children, which is the future of our nation. 
Take that out, and there's nothing. Absolutely nothing. Looking at the Americana. Oh, no, no, no. no. You're, so you take away a marriage license, and there's nothing. My wife and I don't have a marriage license. We have eight children that are growing up just fine. I have one of them right here, so I disagree. Uh, when the state's not involved Mar- with my marriage at all. The state can't get involved if we, quote-unquote, got a divorce, because we can't get divorced. We don't have a marriage license. Well, you're breaking up. It's hard for me to hear. But when viewed from the Americana, uh, what they say is that it's viewed within the entire past reign of society that marriage is the building block. I mean, it's so self-evident. And those people that don't think so are, are, are become this this. I'm not, evil, amoral society. I'm not arguing the fact that marriage is important. I'm arguing the fact of why is the state involved in it. Because it's, it's, if you need certain aspects. We live in this modern world. And the state, but, the the state the should be involved. Well, what did they get in 2008? 0.40. And that's where they're going to stay. That well, philosophy what? will not fly. We have to preserve this country as the best we can with a revitalized Republican Party. If we're going to ever get rid of this... Oh my gosh, you've got to be kidding me. A revitalized Republican Party. That You mean the ones down there in Anchorage? Uh, well, I'll tell you then, there's no hope. If we can't revitalize it, with you take the first you three seriously? paragraphs from the Declaration of Independence, and we build... A, a I don't see the Republican Party that in that. Concept. I don't see the Thank Republican you. Party in the first three paragraphs of the Declaration of Independence. The whole document of the Constitution, I don't see the Republican Party in any of it. The Republican Party is part of the problem because it is a that. party. It, 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 look, to start from the ground up, these people that are this fifth... We don't um, advocate the Libertarian will, Party either. Win, we're, we're dead in the water. Then we're dead in the water. If what? When they pass this on homosexual marriage, I will no longer swear allegiance to this country. I don't right now. Why, why would you swear allegiance to the country in the first place? I, I, well, how have alliances since time immemorial? We have the unity of people. In other words, there no unity. And as far as marriage goes, they throw it, throw it all out. How about we just wander around the earth like a pack of wild stray dogs? So, no, I, your, your premise is false because you're saying that the only way that we're not going to be walking around like a pack of dogs is to have the state. And the but state is the roaming lion that seeks to devour. I don't know if you've noticed that, but... I mean, that's well, a say, reference to Satan, audience, but... I challenge you, read the first chapter of Romans. I have. And I've read the whole book. Day. What does that have to have do with day. with whether the state should be involved in marriage or not? I don't understand. Don't... Why do you hang up? But he said he... Uh, and then your, your, your premise is that if the Republican Party isn't revitalized, our rights are gone? Hello, the Republican Party started... During the Civil War, our rights were destroyed by the Republican Party when they didn't allow the South to secede. Correct? Yeah. yeah. Well, and one of the one of the two, they actually said the main reasons for the existence of the Republican Party was to destroy the two evils of slavery. And you know what the other one was? No. Bigamy. Hmm. So right there from the very beginning of the Republican Party, it was all about getting in other people's bedrooms. Right. We are not against marriage we're against the state being involved and it's for the children i don't even understand that argument uh, if if the state has the ultimate responsibility of the children then the state can step in and take away children from any household at any time for any reason yeah oh wait they already do they already do because <laughs> they claim ownership of them uh, but the on a sidebar I, there was a family here in, in um that just applied for asylum here in the United States a couple weeks ago, came over from Germany where they were being persecuted for homeschooling their Mm -hmm. kids. Court decision just came out this week that there is no, quote, fundamental right to educate your children according to American law. Well, that's case law, right? Jurisdiction and all that good stuff. And you're going to fight that, you're going to lose. If you're going to worry about the Republican Party and the revitalization of it, you're, yeah, you're screwed. (laughs) Good luck with that. Yeah, when you have the gosh, Republican the, the, Party, the that, Republican platform, <laughs> right? The platform. Where has the Republican Party done anything in the last 100 years that advanced our liberty? Zero, zero, none, nada. Since they, 1863, they've, they've restricted other people's liberties, though, and doesn't that help ours if they restrict? I well, mean, sure, they they're pretty good. As on long them. as there are moral restrictions, then they're okay. They gave us the EPA. That's good. That helped out. A they lot. gave us the they gave us the Department of Education. The Republicans did that. Mm. Yeah, they did. And you know, I don't. 
from Mr. Ronnie. Yeah, good so, old Ronald Reagan. I could care less if the Libertarian Party got point zero two three five. I didn't vote for any Libertarians either. I'm not going to. I don't support the quote unquote Republic, the re- Libertarian Party. I adhere to some Libertarian ideals, but I'm not a quote unquote Libertarian. Well, I adhere to Libertarian anarchism, as defined by Murray and Rothbard, but not the Libertarian Party. This is just another form of power. And I'm not into a smaller, more efficient, quote-unquote, government. Well, the basis for the Libertarian Party is that um, gov- the institution of government should begin and end with the protection of private property. That's the basis for the Libertarian Party. Right, and what's a good idea, and it's uh, classical liberalism yeah. at its finest, but it doesn't work. As Hans Hopp says, that um, a tax-funded protection agency is a contradiction in terms. And Hans Hopp's a libertarian. He would call himself, well, he'd say he's a libertarian anarchist, but... Yeah, good luck with the Republican Party. Let me know how that goes for you. <laughs> and I wish, I actually wish you hadn't hung up because we, there's no reason we can't have a discussion on it. Well, why do you think they kept Obama in office so that in four years everyone's going to freak out if we're still here? <laughs> everyone's going to freak out to get a Republican in office. Oh yeah, they're already running. And then they're going to blame the last eight years on the Democrats. Even though history points out the problem is the government. I've had a friend of mine the other day was telling me how Obama's destroying the military and we're doomed because, you know, those other countries wouldn't have dared mess with us in the past. And now, you know, they have nuclear tests and they do this and they do that. You know, I think they had nuclear tests when Bush was president. They huh. did, yeah. North Korea. So, and uh, so the big main Republican mantra is that he's destroying the military when in fact... All he's doing, well, he's not. Well, he's, he, he's pumping money to him. What the heck? And even, even if and he were, wouldn't that about, be, would that be necessarily a bad thing? Right. Bring the troops home and shut down the bases. What the heck? That'd be great. Let's cut a trillion dollars out of the trillion dollars. When you have... If you did that, Josh, then it would all come over here. I mean, we've talked about... <laughs> yeah, but all our troops would be here, so wouldn't we be the most powerful, quote-unquote, nation in the world? Well, wait a most second. If all, if all of those men were here, where would they find jobs, John? Well, hopefully they would create jobs oh, like what? the men from World War II did. Hmm. Actually go into business for themselves? The uh, the budget cuts they're talking about, sequest- the sequester or whatever, you know, they're going... Our military is going to be devastated from that. It's a bunch of bull crap. All they're going to do is cut a couple billion dollars from the... Um, the civilian side, primarily. Well, yeah, from the civilian side, but all it is is a cut from the increase. They're getting more money this year, whether it's a sequester or not. But what the sequester is, is taking some of that away, some of the increase away. When the government talks about budget cuts or cuts to whatever, they're not talking about actually taking away some from the current budget where they're actually going to get less next year. They're talking about giving them less of an increase. It's like they're still going to get $17 billion more than they did last year, sequester or not. Right. And their budget, operating budget, is almost a trillion dollars a year. I don't think we need that. And I'm not worried about North Korea and their big nuke that's smaller. Their nuke is like a third or a quarter or eighth or tenth of the size of the one of Hiroshima. Wasn't isn't it wasn't it a half kiloton? Right. Well, I guess so. If it was a half kiloton, then it's just slightly smaller than. Well, no, it's half the size of uh, Hiroshima's. Because I think that was right at one kiloton. But that's a kiloton. We have megaton bombs. But right, the a, a half kiloton nuke doesn't even burn up um, three square miles. Other right? other countries are not allowed to defend themselves like we are, Josh. That's true. They they're just not allowed. They don't Josh. have a system to deliver. Josh, they don't have in, a missile that can re-enter the atmosphere. You're in business for yourself. Yeah, I drive a uh, truck okay. and make money, like no, that guy said. No, you, you can reasonably expect you next year, you, uh, you're going to have an automatic increase in how much money you make, right? You can reasonably expect that. You just know you're going to get more next year than you get now? No, I know that I'm going to actually pay more taxes than I did last year. Well, wait a second. <laughs> you're actually going to get less based on inflation. That's guaranteed. Aha! So, so what do you do if you want to get more money for next year? I have to work harder. 
You can't you can't just make somebody go out and pay you more. You can't just request more money. You know, I've tried that. As it's what you can underbid you. <laughs> Someone underbids me and like, dang it. Yeah, it doesn't happen in the real world. So, obviously. So why do I we, don't get cost of living increases? So then why does it happen in government? Because they can vote it to themselves. Because they can vote it for. <laughs> exactly. Because they get to vote their own pay increase. Bah. That's great. It's just like this whole thing with Obama wants to raise the minimum wage. How stupid is that? He wants to raise it up to nine dollars now to help the poor people and blah. blah. Okay. That way, that so there's already no. <laughs> there's already no jobs out there and people aren't hiring anyone. So let's make it even harder. Let's make the cost of hiring someone even more. It makes so much sense. Well, and you know, even Republicans back the then. I've heard them on your show. Mm-hmm. It's the unions that push for that. And if they really believe that the uh, minimum wage was so important and actually did anything, then why isn't the minimum wage 35 bucks an or hour? Or 100 bucks an hour. Yeah, let's give the people what they need to survive. One million dollars an hour. <laughs> That's coming. <laughs> I heard that they're already they're already uh, printing thousand dollar bills again. They're not releasing them, but they're That premium. is so awesome. That just makes me so happy. I think awesome. they need to just... Thousand dollar bill, y'all! Think ahead and start printing those hundred thousand, then millions, <laughs> hundred millions, hundred trillions. Oh, I, I got one of those Zimbabwe dear. hundred trillion dollar bills. A hundred? By the time they printed it and got it out to the market, it was already gone. I mean, it wasn't worth anything. But before that was a trillion dollar bill. So by the time the trillion dollar bill hit the streets, so, they are already printing a hundred trillion dollar bill because the trillion, there wasn't enough of them. What if instead of trying to to, <laughs> to to rely on the government money, Josh, people started using barter system with each other? Would oh, it, that would cost thinking. Thinking? Mm-hmm. Well, nothing's going to change till everybody shoots somebody in the face. We already established that in the first half hour. And if they don't get the Republican Party back in power. That was... A, Second half hour there. Oh. So we pretty much solved all the world's problems. We need to shoot people in the face, and we don't believe that, so don't try that, FBI. We got to shoot people in the face, and they have to be Republicans shooting the people in the face. So we're good. I'm uh, not, I'll, and we have to go to I court. I can go home. I'm going home. We, we, we have get, to go to are court. Are we good? We got it all? Fight judges. All right. And their own power. 458 Talk like is the it. number. We have another hour of Patriots Lament coming up after the Fox News here on KFAR. Check us out online, KFAR660.com. And if you're really adventurous, check it out on your smartphone with the free TuneIn Radio app. And welcome to Patriots Lament right here on KFAR. It's local talk radio, 660 on your AM dial. Online at KFAR660.com and available as well on your smartphone with the free TuneIn Radio app. This is our two of the program, basically, here. Joining us in the studio from Baghorn Enterprises, we've got uh, Josh Bennett. Somewhere around here, your brother Aaron, did he... Uh... No, he's here. So he's around no, here. Maybe he's... Well, yeah, we had somewhere. An interesting first hour today, talking about how... We are basically we're doing too much talking. We need to stop talking and go out there and do something. And I, I don't know, Josh. It seems to me that uh, no, the other callers that called in convinced me that we still need to keep talking. Well, yeah, why is that? <sighs> Republican Party. If we don't have a Republican Party, we're doomed. I mean that. That's pretty much uh, what it sounds like. People continue to put their their trust and their hope in. The political process. And I'm listening to the Republicans at the top of the hour there. Mr. President, sound bites don't create jobs. We do. Government doesn't create jobs. Hello, folks. The way that you create jobs is that you disappear. I have a great jobs plan. Government disappears. That's it. Yeah, okay. I mean... I don't know if no one's listening to us anymore or ever did. We're trying to talk about something completely different than the status quo here, folks. We need to think differently. The status quo, what has been, does not work, will not work, cannot work. We need to start thinking differently. We need to start taking matters more seriously than just thinking that we need to pass this off to someone that's whatever. 
going to lead us to liberty, lead us to salvation, lead us on. We ain't got no Moseses out here. Right? Well, even we don't then, need no Sauls. Even then with Moses, I mean, did Moses want to lead the people? No. Did he run for office? Mm, no, he's kind of forced into it. <laughs> he was kind of forced into it. You don't it. argue with Well, you can't argue with him, but it's you know, the mouth of a whale or a big fish, whatever it was. Anyways, we might as well see if they're still on there. Well, we got four That's lines on fun. hold right now. Four, five, eight, talk is the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? This is Lee Chapman. Lee, what's on your mind? Hello, well, Lee. There's a lot. There's a lot. I was <laughs> attacked by a trooper a uh, little while back in the lobby as I was leaving out the door because I told him he could go F himself. Hmm. Um, uh, I went in to see if I could get a no-contact order uh, enforced, and of course they they refused to enforce it. Uh, so that was that was lyrics, and uh, uh, not only that, but uh, I have flipped off the judge, which was uh, Robert Downs, and told him to f himself in court several times. Uh, it's all on recording, and. Uh, I have been raped by the state. I have been. I have my property stolen. Uh, I have lost my job, and I'm not backing down. Period. Okay. Oh, I thought I it was. Mean, how's how's that, how's it worked out for you so far? I'm still fighting the fight. Good. And like I say, I'm not backing down. It's going to be hard to do, I mean, obviously, in a state-run court, which Well, no, I, I'm actually, I'm not even going to go, go to Supreme, I'm not going to go to the Supreme Court. I'm going into federal court. Uh, even if I lose, doesn't matter. I'll go to Congress. I do not care. Hmm. So we, not only am I I'm, I'm talking to talk, but I'm also walking the walk. Yeah, no, I hear what you're saying, and I'm glad. I mean, we got to, uh, if you don't stand up for your liberty, what liberty do you have? None. You know, I'm not being violent. I'm not going to resist arrest. I'm not going to run. I'm not, I may be crazy, but I'm not stupid <laughs> either. Yeah. You know, I know the difference. Yeah. I mean, I was raised, my dad was a cop. I grew up around cops. Uh, I remember playing in the jail cell when I was a kid. Mm. You know, and, and I, I actually started to follow in his footsteps back in 81. You hear about this crash that happened out in Cole Bay. I worked, I, I worked crash, uh, uh, crash and rescue uh, when I was 16 mm. out there. And then uh, we, we moved into Anchorage, and uh, he wanted me to become a trooper because he knew my integrity. And I was accepted, and I thought about it, and I said, no, I don't want to do it. And so I rejected it. Good. So did they, you said the state stole your property. Was that from a tax thing or a... Well, yeah, if if, if you Google my name or you go to court view and you you type in my name, you'll you'll see it. What was your name again? Lee? Lee Chapman. Okay. Thanks for the call, Lee. Okay. Yeah, and good luck. Four, five, Just don't do something to get yourself shot. Yeah, exactly. Four, five, eight, talk, and, and flipping up a cop. That that could get you shot if you flipped off a cop. Yeah, I think that's assault. Yeah. Four, five, eight, talk, the number. Good morning. This is Patriots Command. Who's this? Hello. Hey, who is this? It's Viking Dwayne. Uh, I got a axe. Uh, um, how's it go? An axe, a, a An axe to grind? sword, and a forty-four. When I answer my door, you know what I mean. Uh, say it again. I didn't hear the axe. An axe, a, an sword, axe, and a sword, and a forty-four. And a 44. <laughs> anyway, um, you guys ain't making much sense today, but. Well, it's because we have people call in and talk about things that the state does to them. Well, yeah, you know... But they don't, they're not recognizing it for the fact that the state itself is the problem. Well, they want the state to fix themselves. 
well, and you they know, want the state to fix everybody else. And then our ultimate answer to that's what you just called in and said. Yeah. From our cold dead fingers, an axe is sword and a 44. Come and yeah. get them <laughs> while you take everything and rape us of everything and we sanction it. And it's okay yeah. as long as it's the Republican Party doing it. And we'll fight them at their own game. And we don't care as long as it's not us because we have our axe and our sword and our 44. <laughs> there you go. Basically, me and my you, brother are just wasting our time. You know, I think that we should set a precedent here in, in Alaska. Uh, what I, I was thinking about is we should just go ahead and take our money and do, you know, make the changes. You know, like they're trying to take our guns and all this stuff, but, uh, well, I, I'm a proponent to, um, I'm going to make a bumper sticker, um, a shotgun for every home, you know, that uh, if you don't have a gun, we'll buy you one, you know, for Alaska or whatever, make a bumper sticker. But, uh, you know, that doesn't necessarily mean that you just have to have a shotgun, like uh, oh, Biden said, you know, just shoot from the balcony. Yeah, I you saw know, that. That was pretty funny. All you need is a shotgun to shoot from the balcony because they'll run. <laughs> you get arrested. Well, my son has a shotgun. What if you don't have a balcony? Any yeah. Kind of what if you live in the city limits where it's illegal to, to discharge a firearm? Yeah. Uh, you know. Biden's not the has, smartest of them. My son what? has a shotgun. It'll, it'll, it'll rock your world. It has a banana clip in it and a... Uh, 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 Saga 12. Saga 12? I mean, you know, it's like... This thing will rock your world, but I don't mind having a shotgun either. But, you know, there's nothing worse than a little old lady or your wife with a shotgun in her hands, you know? No, we're all for shotguns, definitely. Would that scare you? I'm a big believer in buckshot. Number four. <laughs> I prefer Double number four. Buck, you Nickel know? plated number four is my favorite. But, uh, we, 44 we gotta, rounds, baby. 22 we ought to set the precedent in Alaska. I, I believe that we should just That's an go ahead and pass these laws. Oh, and, shoot. You know, like there's a few other states. Uh, Texas is one of them, and I'm not sure if it's Montana or whatever, but, you know, they're, they're fighting for our gun rights and everything. Yeah, some of them are. I, I don't agree with having a law that says you have to have a gun or whatever, like uh, the Swiss do. I encourage people to own guns. I think it should be encouraged, but if you don't want one, if people well, are scared of them, they should, they either should be trained to not be scared of them or whatever, or but I definitely don't want them to have one. To, I mean, because they can self-inflict pain upon themselves. Or, or other well, people, other people. don't know what they're doing. Uh, let, let me ask you a, call, a question, caller. If uh, you know you're talking about we should pass these laws to restrict the federal laws, at, at what point do the uh, who trumps who? Because I mean, at some point, aren't the feds just going to come and say, "Sorry, you don't have the authority to pass a law against us"? Yeah, and isn't there already a quote unquote Second Amendment to the Constitution and the Bill of Rights that says we have to say right that they to... shouldn't be doing these laws in the first place? Yeah, yeah. So well, I, I'm just I mean, saying, where does it end, brother? Legislation just to just to set a precedent, saying, "Hey, we, you know, heck no, we won't go or whatever, you know." We strongly what? disagree with being put in a cage. One, two, three. What are we fighting for? Next stop is Afghanistan. You know, I don't know. All right. You know what I mean? Thanks for the call. Well, the problem with uh, <laughs> passing laws is that you are saying that someone has a right to pass a law saying what your rights are. Well, then all they have to do is pass a law saying what your rights are not anymore. That's positive law. It doesn't work. That's Come on. Listen, folks. Those things don't work. That you shall not want. You don't want laws. If they can make a law granting you a right, they can make a law taking that right away. Your rights are inherent. You don't need laws. Ready for another call, Josh? I don't know. 458 Talk is the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Hey, this is Joanna. Joanna, what's on your mind today? Hey, I heard uh, I heard one of you Bennett brothers say something about uh, next election cycle, if we were still here. And I wonder what you meant by that. It was actually the... The, the, the caller said that. No, no, it was the spawn of Bennett who said that. It was... Um, uh, oh, Israel, yeah. Israel over here. He's the one who said... It was actually... If we're still here. I believe... Uh, Correct me I, think that's a, I think that's a mentality that the next generation is growing up with. If I'm still here, if I grow up, this is what I'm going to be if I grow up instead of when. And uh, well, some of it too is <laughs> some of it too is mocking 
there's a little bit of mockery to it too because I mean since Obama's been elected the mantra is I had I bet Wait, four or five had people a call or call today and say that we won't have another president that's what everybody says that if we're still around because of Obama and blah 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 it's like come on I well, there's someone a little bit more powerful running things and uh, not Robbie. a little bit. Republican Party? Yeah. yeah. What, What? you think that there's a higher power in charge of world events, Josh? Yeah, actually I do. I'm not worried about man. My faith isn't in man. If it was, or the Republican Party, I would really, I'd go bury myself in that snowbank across the river there. But also, not. I would say I appreciated you uh, bringing up that you don't have a marriage license with your wife. I've had trouble with some of my friends who, they're like, they look at me like, does that, are you really married? What? You yeah, know? how can that even it be? possible? You know, you didn't get the state's permission, like as though I needed it or something. I, I also thought it. it was funny that the um, the only time when the liberals and the gays, they, they want church and state to be combined is for marriage purposes. They want the, <laughs> the state's permission to go get married in a church or something. Why would you even want the permission? Yeah, Josh has pointed that out so many times. It's hilarious. You're absolutely right. Good point. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Toronto. You know what? What's next? Are we going to need permission to have to breed? We need to go get a license to to make a baby. Well, they encourage that if you're not married. Yeah. More. Uh, we need some more, more laws. Di- more direct dependence. We do need more laws. We need more Republican, yeah, Republican party laws, laws. that need, regulate if, those morals. If we had more Republican laws, we'd be good. Yeah, we wouldn't have all this. Debauchery going you, on. You guys now. realize that when you go off down these sarcastic roads, that there are some people that actually do not realize that you're being sarcastic, and they're like, "What?" I was just going to say. I'm that. starting Sometimes to wonder. I can't tell. <laughs> we need, we need repo- I thought they didn't like Republicans. Now well, they're then they're, they're just going to have to listen longer until they figure out when we're being sarcastic, <laughs> <laughs> or we need to change our voice. Uh, um, no, we do not think that we need more laws or Republicans or Democrats or Libertarian parties or. <laughs> licenses or fees. We don't believe in the state, okay? We would like to see it gone. Not you, violently, but out of people removing their consent you, from such. You don't believe in the state of Alaska, Josh? Yeah. I had a guy <laughs> ask me. He saw my bumper sticker. He goes, what's your problem with the state? I said, what are you talking about? Well, you don't like the state of Alaska? <sighs> well, I kind of knew that would happen. So I got to have a little conversation with him, what I meant by the state. As long as you just put that you don't like legislators, then. Uh, well, but you could still have, even without that, legislators. That, you if I had to point orders, everyone yeah. out, that bumper sticker would take up my whole pickup. The state is a, is, is, a <laughs> is a synonym for government. Government. 458 to talk is a number you're going to refer to. Constitutional or otherwise. Yeah, let's. All right. Good morning. It's like Welcome the most to call we've ever Patriots taken in the last two months. Good morning. Who's this? Is that me? It might be. Depends on who it is. Uh, this is Justin. Justin, I'm sorry, it's not you. You lo- No, go ahead. Oh, it is. Man. What's on your mind? Uh, yeah, I'm calling about the uh, Republican guy. That's why I call him. He calls into every radio show except... Uh, oh, you're calling radio. to talk to me then? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> the caller. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Yeah, he, he keeps calling about the uh, gay marriage. And I, I think marriage is traditionally a religious function. So I, I don't know what the state has any sort of business to do with it. Um, I, I do have a marriage license, but it's from a foreign country. And even on it, it, it has the the title of the state of that country within, from within that country and not from the country itself. Wait, wait, is it valid oh, really? here? Is it val- are, you, are you really married because you have a marriage license from another country? Yeah, we're really married. We got we got kids, so the the deal is sealed. What know? does uh does our just curiosity does our government recognize that then? Yeah. A foreign marriage yeah. license. Yeah. That's cool. I was just curious if they did or not. But yeah, I that's our point wholeheartedly is what is it the state's business in the first place? It has traditionally when people say, you know, one of the points he made was well, you know. In history, and history, and history. Well, in history, you don't see the state issuing license. The only time that they issued license in history was a restriction to keep certain peoples from marrying other certain peoples. Right? Undesirables. But if you actually look at history, it was normally a either a religious ceremony, or if you go back to reading in the Old Testament, there wasn't even a ceremony. A guy went out and he said, hey, 
I want your daughter for my son. Okay. You take her. Hey, here's your wife. Thanks. Yeah. I mean, there's so how many. Would your, how would your boys feel about that? <laughs> Probably not so much. No. Is but I mean, if we want to go back to history, history, that's how they did it. Woman, <laughs> here, this is your wife. Enjoy. How would you? you what was your name, by the way? Justin. No, I. Uh, yeah, yeah, sorry <laughs> well, I, I, no. I was wondering about the, this guy, though the the guy that keeps calling into all the radio shows except radio. Uh, do, does he also want the federal government to stop these people from getting uh, driving and hunting and fishing licenses from the states too? Hmm. You mean uh, homosexuals? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Oh yeah, I think those, those, that's are, a, those are very issues salient from the point. State yeah, and, and not he, from the federal government. Hmm. Well, I think his main point is um, that he sees the state giving uh, homosexuals marriage licenses is that we are sanctioning that. Is that the state sanctioning it, so it's now a state saying it's moral. And if you really look deep at that, there's there's an underlying problem with that whole premise. When the state sanctions something, society accepts it as correct. When the state sanctions... Abortion, no. all of a sudden, the society sees it as correct. When the state says that drugs are not sanctioned by the state, then we say, well, then using drugs are not correct. But the state has sanctioned alcohol, so we can be drunks, and that's correct. So I can understand his point with the sanctioning, why that would disturb him. But let's take it all the way and say, then. I don't want them to sanction any marriage. Amen to that. I don't want them to sanction anything. I don't want the state to yeah, be there I, to I, sanction. I don't need their sanction. Exactly. Thank I, you. I, I just don't. Caller of the day <laughs> right here. <laughs> bing, bing, bing. Well, I, win, I, I also have, I have something. Uh, what Can I ask you what country, if you don't care? Or, I oh, mean, are sure. you from here? Or? Oh, I, I'm from here, and she is from Micronesia. M- what? Micronesia. Micronesia. It's a really oh. small country. <laughs> is that a <laughs> Micronesia <laughs> country? No, no it's, it's. Yeah. It's over by it's, uh, Australia. Oh, really? It's kind of between Hawaii and Guam. See, you're one. You're one of those Obama supporters then, because you brought <laughs> yeah, in somebody not. foreign. <laughs> no, no and go ahead. Taking he all our jobs just so he can get votes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. No, he had he had another point. Go, go ahead, ahead, Justin. Yeah, uh, uh, Bull called in. He calls in all the time. I usually agree with him, and he said people need to have a pair and stand up, and I agree with that. But in cases like Waco and Ruby Ridge, how are people going to know where and when to be at to stand up? A lot of people are at work and going about their daily lives, and these things go on, and if the sheriff or the local law enforcement don't put it out on the radio or something, people ain't going to know that they need to be there standing up And the they're at work. Local law enforcement was involved with the federal law enforcement in, yeah, in but, both of those instances. instances. But, like, the, the normal person doesn't know that these things are going on to be there. I, I don't think the normal person would actually... I, how many people? How many normal people do you know even know their neighbors? You well, know, and if, you're, if your neighbor called up and said, Hey, I need help. The cops are over here harassing me. Are you going to say, Okay, I'm going to be right over? Or are you going to say, Yeah, you probably have some drugs hidden in your basement, don't you? That, how many normal people involve themselves in the use of force against their neighbor? That's true. And this... Um, I think this under goes back to the underlying sanctioning, mm-hmm. back to the marriage license and all that. When the state does those things, we sanction it. We see it as, well, they must be doing something, right? The, the normal person says, well, they must be doing something wrong. Otherwise, why would the federal government be doing that? Even when because you get, we've sanctioned didn't that the Nazis, Didn't the Nazis rely on that? Yeah, absolutely. Well, even when you get pulled over, what's the first thing that goes through your mind? When I get pulled over? What, what did I do wrong? Oh, right. I must have done something wrong. Or if you see someone pulled over, you think, ah, oh, he was speeding, or the cop ran a red light, ran did this, must have done that. Yeah, when uh, I remember Waco very well, and people were like, yeah, go get him. There were very few people that were disturbed by that. I remember yeah. my grandpa saying that. Yeah. Well, and, and it just I happened with it just happened with one guy down there in California, the guy that they had the manhunt with, and they ended up in the cabin all holed up, and mm-hmm. they went ahead and burned down the cabin around him, and people were like, "Oh yeah, they used incendiary tear gas." We didn't mean to set it on fire. Accidental. Aaron, can you explain to me incendiary tear gas? Well, if they use CS gas, if they lit it off, then it turns into cyanide. 
and it burns quite rapidly and hot. Right. It be it becomes a at the same poison that you associate with cyanide. The gas in the gas chambers. Yes, Nazis. exactly. That makes me feel so much better about law enforcement. Yeah, but it's, uh, so I think it's the sanctioning. Know. It is. It, it is, is the sanctioning. Justin, thank you so much for the phone call. That's yeah. Why, that's why the revolution's in the hearts and minds and doesn't have anything to do with a gun. Or CS gun. Or shooting people in the face. Exactly. Yeah, thanks for the call. You made what about if you shoot today people, coming like, in the show worth right. it. <laughs> Please call back. <laughs> exactly. I'm going to tell your friends to listen, too, because you know what? It, people, what people used to do before there was Facebook... And before there was, you know, little handheld video games. They talked? They actually used to have, go and have conversations with other people, like, I don't know, maybe their neighbors? Mm, or well, that sounds Steve, dangerous. You're crazy. I'm, well, I'm crazy. <laughs> All right. Four, five, Let's eight. Let's hit the hotline. Talk, talk is a number. Uh, good morning. Who's this? You there, hotline? Oh, I'm hearing somebody else. Yeah, who is this? Can you hear me? Yeah, who is this? This is Andrew from Idaho. Hey, Andy, what's up? We are we are about thirty uh, seconds fun. away from the from the Fox News here at the bottom of the hour. Can you hold on? Yes. All right, wonderful. Yeah, we'll come right back to you after the Brock. All right, you've got it on KFAR Local Talk Radio. We've got more Patriots Lament on the way. Four five eight talk is the number. All lines are on hold. Welcome back to Patriots Lament right here on KFAR's Local Talk Radio. Joining us in the studio as always from Big Orange Enterprises, we have uh, Josh Bennett from Far North Tactical, Aaron Bennett. And we also have one of the spawn of Bennett in here today uh, as well. Here. Israel, yes, you are here. I see you. I physically are. And we also have uh, on the phone somebody calling in from, where is this, Idaho? Idaho. Yeah. All right. Uh, go ahead, sir. You are on the air. What's on your mind? Yeah. Uh, I've heard you guys talk more about uh, property values and property rights and that. Mm-hmm. And here in Idaho, they haven't really talked too much about it, but talking about Agenda 21. Yeah. And how it would be your right having to get a permit to grow your own food and that. <laughs> to where the planet is its own entity. Right. Uh, could you expand on that? Is that happening there? Yeah, the borough here is actually very much into Agenda 21, which is a UN yeah, resolution. Signed on to it, yeah. Right. Basically what it is is to get people out of the rural, rural and get them in the cities, concentrate civilization to protect the earth, protect the world, blah, blah, blah. Basically, it is so anti-property rights, anti-American. Right. The basis for liberty comes from original appropriation. And the more you can erode private property, the more you can erode uh, any kind of liberty. Well, you erode property rights, which we've discussed that, what property is. You erode that, you take that away, there is nothing left. Because right, it's and, your own and, self. and to make the the planet itself an entity, it's to totally seal the deal on any liberty forever. Right. You have to get permission to grow your own food. Well, you know, that, that's actually already happening all over the United States. I've read things on Lou Rockwell where people are being arrested for growing tomatoes in their backyard. Arrested for growing f- tomatoes in their front yard. Arrested for growing, I think, no, it wasn't potatoes. Potatoes are probably okay. But different uh, vine vegetables, like cucumbers and stuff like that, and they're getting hauled off to jail for not having the proper permits for doing such a thing. And we're not talking commercial. You know, it's not a commercial entity, or they're not growing commercially, or 10 million tomato plants. They had four or five tomato plants in their yard. Cops came knocking down their door, hauled them off to jail for illegally growing tomatoes. Can in I? fact, one guy was caretaking his mother's house, and she has planters around the edge of her home, his mom. So he planted three tomato plants in the planters, and they threw him in jail for it. So is that a federal crime, or is it, against, is it a state? That was a municipality, yeah. I think. I mean, the Agenda 21 is, I don't, they go right after the municipalities, yeah, boroughs, they, they counties, cities. They down to the local level. Yeah, as close to home as they can. Right, and the only, the only way something that ludicrous could happen to regulate a, a vine like a tomato, which happens to be related to the hemp plant, would be the same ideology of regulating the hemp plant. It's the sanctioning of the state. 
So the same person that feels appalled that a tomato plant, you can go to jail for that, thinks that the state should be able to enforce somebody growing a hemp plant. It's the use of force any way you look at it. The state's the problem. Not not the 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 moralness of the object you're looking at. One of the things, one of the stories that I read about that on Lou Rockwell, the person that was arrested for growing a tomato plant, his neighbor complained about it. He didn't think that he should be growing tomatoes on his own, in his own yard. Right, but it's not his own because the state's its own, or the, the planet it is, is his, his own, own entity. Right. Come on. Which, obviously, the, so that means that the UN has a some kind of mental consciousness with the earth and gets they must talk to the earth or something <laughs> to ask it what it well, I don't what know if it you watch Avatar or, 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 or wait possible. a second wait a second maybe maybe these environmentalists are just useful idiots for the people in the UN and the real point has absolutely nothing to do with the planet but it has to do with control ah. oh Is no I think it's probably because of Obama all right. Hey, yeah, I, I, can, I ask, no. can I ask a question of the caller? Yeah. Did he right. vote for Obama? No, 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 no. You live in Idaho, right? Right. How far away are you from Ruby Ridge? Uh, that's up north. About um, eight, down yeah. towards Boise. Okay. About eight I'm, hours. I'm, I'm kind of curious. What happened to the property, that land that uh, was owned by the, the the folks that got killed? Help me out here. Who were the the, the, the Weavers? The, the Weavers. Randy Weaver and his uh, and his uh, family. Uh, they they. Randy doesn't still live there, does he? No, no but Randy um, got a huge settlement from the state. No, he didn't. No, no, he did. No, he didn't. His daughters did. Oh. And no, they didn't get Sorry. a huge settlement. It was a couple million bucks. But his wife, his he wife was nothing. murdered. His son was nothing. murdered, and he, wa- he basically he got nothing. What happened to the land? Their that family they were out got there a settlement. Trying to, because I'm I'm curious. No, directly to each daughter. If that land ended up in the hands of anyone who had any kind of. Uh, financial gain from getting the Weavers off the land. <laughs> he, Randy Weaver did get an apology. I saw that on TV. They apologized for killing his wife. No, I mean, are, you, are you still there, Colin? Can you, uh, do you know? <clears throat> I'm not sure. No, I haven't read up on it. But yeah. How is the cheese-making so business going? So. Pretty awesome. <laughs> you know, I'm it's glad. Crazy. I'm glad I moved out of Idaho simply for the fact that they used to go in there and walk, be able to watch and make the cheese and get to eat cheese curds. No, they don't let you do that anymore. Why not? Yeah. They're a bunch of socialists. It's because they sold out <laughs> to the French. So I guess the yeah, real question should have been, how do you like working for the French? Mm. <laughs> That's fantastic. Do you get to uh, go by French rules where you only work three hours a day, four days a week? No, it's, it's <laughs> totally different. It's corporate world. Oh, that's too bad. All right, well, thanks for calling in from the cheese factory. I think it was Goodyear or some... Uh, there's some manufacturer in, in France, they let the, the that entity go out of business. I can't remember which one. It was like Goodyear, some some uh, car or tire, some kind of automotive manufacturer. And they're going bankrupt. And the CEO let them go bankrupt. And the French government got ticked off and all the workers there. And they're like, eh, how come you didn't save it? Bail it out and blah, blah, blah. He flat out said, because you're a bunch of lazy, worthless people. We're glad that you're bankrupt. We're glad we're shutting this thing down. You're he said the Andy French were the most, job, were probably. the laziest people he'd ever met because he said, you know, they have huge labor laws there. They're only allowed to work like 33 hours a week or something like that. Allowed to work so many hours a week. It's like 30 something. And he said, out of those, he said, every day, you people, and he was talking to his employees, you work three hours a day. And you talk to the other three, and you get an hour lunch break and an hour whatever break. So, so basically, you're wasting my time. We're glad you're bankrupt. So long. Nice. I thought it was great. And then the finance socialists? minister or interior minister, whoever he was, said it was just shocking. Totally reprehensible what he said. <sighs> just like the people that left France because of the taxes, because their tax rate's like 90% now. The rich people that left, he said, how unpatriotic. To leave and not give us 90% of your wealth. That's because they, they don't said, believe that it's their wealth in the first place. Right. You're making money off of... Who was that rich uh, actor? Gerard, De, Gerard Depardieu. Depardieu? Depardieu. And then uh, I thought it was pretty sweet. Vladimir Putin gave him Russian citizenship and said, Hey, move over here. Yeah. <laughs> the, the ex-commie, right? Mm-hmm. The commie. 
is saying, yeah, it's your money. Come over here. We're more free than France is. Uh, you can judge your freedom based on how much of your wealth you get to keep. Yeah, um, how's that working out down there in Idaho? You want to talk about getting raped for your money. Yeah, you guys have like city tax, county tax, state income tax, and federal yep. income tax. Mm-hmm. That's about, awesome. What is it, about 40%? 60? Uh, 30 to 40, yeah. And you have a state gas tax that is, if I remember right, when I was there, it was like in the 20 cents something or other. Just awesome. Yeah, it is somewhere around there. Mm-hmm. Mm. Well, brother, we got room up here when you're ready to move. Yeah. <laughs> All right. A- Ashley says hi, Andy. I'll talk Thanks to you later, Thanks for the call, man. Thanks for calling. All right. 458 Talk is the number. We move on to the next call. Good morning. This is Patriots Lament. Who's this? Hi, this is Randy. Randy, what's on your mind? <clears throat> uh, on the big question of the show, you know, as always, is, you know, should there be Shooting a state? Shooting people in the face? Well, no. Should there be a state or should there not be a state? Uh, on Problem Corner a few days back, uh, I thought of one example where I thought, well, this kind of shows me anyway that there does need to be a court system of ultimate authority, basically a government-controlled court system. And maybe you guys can kind of help me through it or show the flaws in my thinking or whatever. And an example that I brought up a few days ago was a shoplifter uh, shoplifting from Walmart and getting away, but they catch his license plate number, so Walmart's going to be coming after him. But what the shoplifter does is he looks in the yellow pages and hires his own court uh, that's kind of against Walmart, because there are a lot of groups right now in reality that are against Walmart. You can go to the website and, and go to groups, and they'll sell you anti-Walmart T-shirts and everything. So a lot of people are against Walmart. So you hire a court that's disposed against big, mean, bad corporations, and he has himself his uh, his shoplifting charge tried there and is found innocent. And to me, that seems like a skewed system of justice and wrong. Now, Walmart doesn't like that. They got their own court that they'd hire to try to hire this guy. But since this guy already got tried by this other court over here, he was found innocent, and therefore that allows legal thievery from Walmart. No, you're, ab- you're absolutely right, Randy. I'm just going to jump in here. You're absolutely right. The system that you're talking about is a farce. And that is not a system that we've ever advocated or even discussed or talked about. But at the same time, I can also show you that the state courts do find against corporations because they think that they're evil corporations that don't give proper health benefits, overtime pay, and blah, blah, blah. And you can, I can show or you can look up instances where the state courts have ruled against Walmart simply because they don't like them. And that whole thing, I mean, and plus you're bringing up one instance why we should have this gigantic a, a made anything. Up, a made up. And it's made up. But it's here's, not even here's, reality. Here's the problem with that. If you were in a free market um, society and you had people that were in the business of arbitration rather than having somebody that had a territorial monopoly on arbitration, right? You're talking about a society where there was a free market on arbitration, correct? market on ultimate justice you know where you just have your choose your own ultimate justice and that's done well with, you can only have you can only have an ultimate justice you, you can only have an ultimate justice randy uh-huh. if there's a territorial monopoly on it right which is which would be defined as the state right. you can't have a state without having a monopoly on the arbitration of law correct that is the the definition of the state a territorial Monopoly on the arbitration of law. Yeah. They didn't consider kings to be uh, state kings in the feudal times because they couldn't. They did not have the ultimate arbitration in law. Um, generally, people came to them as the as a uh, authoritarian figure to be an arbitrator in law, but they weren't the ultimate arbitrators in law. It wasn't until the Reformation where kings said, "You are no longer allowed to." go to anyone but me to arbitrate law that they became a state king okay so you're taught that's that's the definition that you're grounding this on that we need the ultimate arbitration of law to lay in the hands of the state but in a free market people would go where they actually got justice well in a free market if you had a free market arbitration of law randy and let's say that i was in the business of arbitration right Mm -hmm. how long would i be employed if i arbitrarily gave arbitration to one person. If I if I didn't have a reputation as a person that could arbitrate law justly, how long would I be in business? I'm going to make this easy. Then we're going to move on. Um, 
audio book, Democracy, The God That Fell by Hans Hermann Hoppe. Go ahead. just It's an on audio. You can listen to it at your leisure. Listen to it. You'll understand all of our argument in that point. And I think... Democracy, that The God That Failed? Democracy, The God That Failed. It's even on audio. It's, it's pretty long. There's ex- excerpts of it that are shorter. If you'd only rather listen to the shorter excerpts that are like an hour, two hours long. Randy, please... Download it or whatever, something. You can get it off the Mises Institute for free. Listen to it. Call back. We'll, thank we'll thank you for the phone Thanks call. Thanks for the call. 458-TALK is the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? This is Winston. Winston, what's on your mind today? Uh, not a whole lot. Um, oh, um, I wonder if uh, getting on my Patrick Henry uh, 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 kick, uh, I wonder if it's too late for uh, 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 for the American people to, to just start spreading the word around that we need a um, the, the the supposed first ten amendments to the Constitution, the supposed Bill of Rights, of uh, of uh, um, uh, these people that want to organize and, and and do something, why don't they just make the the the, the uh, of the Bill of Rights be a standalone document uh, superior to the Constitution of the United States, and then we'd settle a bunch of this stuff. That's a really good idea, actually. And in fact, well. If you think about it, the Bill of Rights is supposed to supersede the Constitution because it actually did. Those rights did supersede the Constitution. True. So, I mean, they had that already. They had this Bill of Rights. It wasn't written down or whatever. That's why they, they actually wrote it down so it would be codified. And they'd say, it's actually written down. We can see it. Go look it up for yourself. But, yeah, the Bill of Rights could be a standalone. You cannot – you are safe in your – we could, uh, uh, we property could has the, right the to second, it. we could call it the Second American uh, Declaration of Independence, uh, and 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 and, and uh, I don't know. Like I said, I'm not into organization or uh, 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 or getting out here and joining militia or nothing like that. You know, uh, 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 but it, uh, I think that if 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 enough people just got to just got to talking about it, uh, you could you could raise some stink. Because Patrick Henry was P.O. I mean, he was he was hostile because they made the uh, uh, the Bill of Rights into amendments. Yep. Because he recognized even at that time that, and I can't quote you chapter and verse where to find the the, the, the documents on. It, but uh, 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 because he knew that as amendments that they they no longer superseded the Constitution. Right. They, instead of being a bill of rights for the people, they became amendments that could actually be repealed. repealed. Right, right. Or changed or modified or, or, yep. or legislated or whatnot. Like I say, uh, 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 we definitely I, need I, don't have, I don't have computer access or nothing like that, but I think if, 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 if you know, a, a few people got on the computer and, and started sort of pushing this, we definitely uh, need some uh, more Patrick Henrys and Samuel Adams. Are you talking uh, about uh, the beer? Uh, oh, I could go for some Sam Adams right now. Yeah, yeah, Sam Adams would be good right now. <laughs> Thanks for uh, calling. <laughs> right, even later. I've All been right. reading some Sam Adams, about Samuel Adams quite a bit, and that guy was awesome. You, you know, one of the things I really like about Samuel Adams is that he had the ability to unite people of a religious background who were upset that their their rights under God were being eroded. Yeah, he was and, from Puritan. And he was also able to go out and get the, the, the true libertarians of the time, the people that didn't go to church, the people who weren't about trying to force their moral will on anybody else, who were upset that their rights to just simply live yeah. were being abused by the British. Yeah, he was fantastic. He knew when to act. He definitely did. And he got people stirred up, and they stood up. You know, at one point, he got 20,000 people together to march on Gage. And that's... General back, Gage. Back in the, in the before time of the, the revolution. When the population was how big? I mean, Two million. Thought, in the whole United... In the whole... All the colonies. The entire was eastern seaboard. There right. was two million people, and he got 20,000 together. Yep, to just march. from a call. Because uh, Gage... Before Concord and all those things, Gage sent out a militia... Or uh, a troop to go and attack, not attack, but just take the colony's arms, one of the, one of the, uh, the and there weren't cities or whatever, but one of the 
villages or whatever. And just when he let the people know, hey, this is going on, whatever, 20,000 people got together to resist the uh, the king's men. I, that know, was before the revolution started. Uh, Nothing happened. They just were like, oh, we're going home. Troops turned around. Whoop. So that was also probably Defeated. before the day when people were sitting in their living rooms watching television and being, pretty much and or going out to to football games. Yeah, and They're, not one drop of blood was shed. So Gage sends out the soldiers to go take these arms from these people. And I can't remember what town it was, but it was in Massachusetts. And people from New York, Rhode Island, they all assembled. Twenty thousand of them. Not a drop of blood was shed. They just said, "You're not going to do this." And the troops turned around and they ran off, which is, you know, basically what the call, what a couple of the callers have said about Waco. If 20,000 people would have showed up and said, you're not going to do this, which was the whole point, like we said, of De La Boati. Take away the consent. You are, in a way, you are the government because what you allow them to do, they can't do without your consent, without your own arms. I mean, even the people that are, they're just citizens, they're just people, the ones that are taking up arms for the government. They're just ordinary people like the rest of us. And if, and if the neighbors, I mean, oh, golly, if they'd stop calling the borough to complain about what's going on on your neighbor's property, mind your own business. Mind your own business. Ready to take another call? Sure. 458-TALK is the number. Good morning. This is Patriots Lament. Who's this? Hello. Hey. It's Randy. All right. Who is it really? <laughs> <laughs> it's John. John, hey, what's on your um, mind? Um, I don't get Randy. I get a couple of comments, but I have to comment on him. But I don't get him because he seems to need people telling him or a government telling him what to do. I don't want none of that. Get out of my life. Get, get away from me. You know, it's just like it's crazy. But it's just like, but people have been so conditioned by our world and the government and the system that they just totally want that well 12 years of indoctrination is part of it i believe well actually every day is indoctrination we hear if you listen to the news and all that but you're definitely the well we already had a caller date you're the second caller of the day (laughs) did you listen to the first call in the the first hour so maybe yeah yeah, you're the caller of the day for the second hour no (laughs) joke oh yeah (laughs) Uh, no you had something else just the rest of my comment I'll just be fast so somebody else might be a chance to get out. But anyways, um, lots of times people today, including myself, are not um, non-violently um, uh, not complying or not resisting or not paying their taxes or not doing things like that because of the fear, because of the tyranny. Sure. I got a family. I don't feel like going to jail for 15 years or the rest of my life. If you're and, lucky um, enough to go to jail, not just get shot. Right. Otherwise, I'd do it in a heartbeat. And that, and that made me think of a couple of other things, but uh, we don't truly, lots of people don't truly understand righteousness. It's just like the Bible says that, um, that uh, right has become wrong and wrong has become right. And our forefathers, and, and, and I'm not, put, again, I'm not pushing, but the, the example of those guys, hey, we will, um, we, uh, we uh, I forgot the word I was going to use, but anyways, they um, would, uh, they're going to stand together, they're going to pledge their lives, their um, their fortunes and be in unity and see it through. But you can't get people to do that nowadays, but that's, you know, partially what we need. But we're living in fear because the federal tyranny, the government tyranny, is so strong and so great. And because your neighbors will call and report on you. And I, right. I think part of that is why they push political parties, because political parties do nothing but divide us. Exactly. They've divided us and they've conquered us using that because people that are normally... Get along, friends, you know, you have husbands and wives even, good friends, they can't talk about politics because they'll start arguing and it divides them, it separates them. And the state pushes that over and over and over because they don't want the people to be unified because if we were, they're done. I agree. Thank Overnight. you. I'll get off the line. And Thanks for the call, man. Else. Appreciate okay. it. 458 Talk is the number. Good morning, caller. This is Patriots Lament. Who's this? Yeah, good morning. Frank Turner here. Hi, Frank. Frank. How are you doing? Oh, pretty good. I want to tell Aaron happy birthday. Happy belated birthday. <laughs> oh, thanks, sir. Now, on your Facebook, it says you were on the 22nd. That's George Washington's birthday. Did they make an error? Yeah, it's the 20th. Okay. I just got it again the other day. They got you down for the 22nd. Anyway, happy birthday. Uh, Two things. First of all, Cricket came on earlier talking about jurisdiction mm-hmm. in a brief. 
Now, I believe that uh, she didn't mention anything about case law setting precedent regarding jurisdiction, but uh, I did make sure that this brief got in the hands of those incarcerated. Uh, since they have a lot of time in their hands, maybe they can challenge their uh, uh, state jurisdiction of incarceration. It'll be interesting uh, if anybody wins a case. Uh, another thing, uh, I never thought I would be uh, looking at the origins of marriage license. And, uh, wow, Josh, you're right on target. Way up until the 1920s, 38 states, the requirement to a marriage license was a mechanism for prohibit uh, whites from marrying blacks, mulattoes, Japanese, Chinese, Native American, Mongolians, Malays, and Filipinos up until the 1920s. Now, the controversy in the U.S., it says some groups believe the requirement to obtain a marriage license is unnecessary and immoral. Yeah. And that's a Libertarian Party stance on it. And also, many religious groups uh, are against the government uh, having a marriage license. They figure that marriage between God and uh, God in, in, in each of the couples. Yeah. But how, how would you be sanctioned if you didn't have a license? And you can't protect the children. <laughs> oh, there you go. No, it's a good point, Frank. Yeah, and Marge and I, we've been together for 20 years. Uh, we're not married. We call her common law. Everybody's calling us sinners, so maybe they're the ones that's sinning. Mm. <laughs> good Have good a morning. good day. Thanks. Thanks. 458 Talk is the number. Good morning, Hotline. Who's this? Hey, can you hear me? Yes, Abe. Abe? Yep. Abe Froman, Sausage King of Chicago. What's up? Oh, man. Um, it's, uh, it's, I, I've only been able to, or, yeah, I've only been able to hear about an hour and 15 minutes of the entire show. It sounds like the first hour was uh, pretty interesting. But one, one thing that I hear in uh, everyone's voices, specifically you know, when Randy calls in, is people are looking for a really easy way out of uh, how, how, how we fix the state we're in you know, so there's no pain. And the truth is, is there really is no easy answer. It's, people are just going to have to buck up and realize that, you know what, the world has lots of bad things that have happened, and the only way for it to be better is for people to stand up and take responsibility for their actions, understand that hard times might happen, and just grow up. I mean, just, I don't, I really don't know how, how better to explain it, but to say that, you know, there is no easy solution to where nobody ever gets hurt, and, you know, and then all of a sudden the world just sick. And it might hurt a little bit in transition. Exactly. I mean, but what's wrong? I mean, like you just said, grow birth. up. We child don't birth need birth. a nanny state. Yeah, no. child birth. No, there's n- nothing. The state cannot make it easier for us. The only thing that they can do is prolong it and make it harder in the long run. And so, they, and economically, the end, they are prolonging it, and it's going to really oh, suck. Indeed, Abe. Hey, thanks for the phone call. Yeah, call We're man. out of time. Quickly, Josh, contact information. PatriotsLament at gmail.com. Blog is patriotslament.blogspot.com. Thanks for calling in, guys. F A R.